Welcome to Let's Talk Tuesday with Red, White, and Bethune. Each week, we will cover a different tip, helpful hack, or advice on all things RV and tiny living. Let's take a look at what we're talking about today. Welcome back to this edition of Let's Talk Tuesday. In this edition of Talk Tuesday, we are gonna jump into RV solar. As you know, we have a pretty complex solar system on our bus. We're gonna go through it piece by piece, step by step, of what it is, how we did it, and why we did it. So let's jump right in. All right, guys, so we're gonna start on the roof of the bus, basically where the system begins, where the energy comes in. Uh, we have a total of 10 panels uh, spread across two systems. Um, they're both, both systems are actually in series parallel, meaning there's, for the main system, for the ACs, there's three panels connected together. Um, so that gives us two. Uh, each set of three goes to its own separate charge controller, and then they are combined at the inverter. Um, for the other one, for the house batteries, we have it connected with the two panels, front and back, each uses its own charge controller. But uh, yeah, it looks like we use pretty much most of our roof. <laughs> There's not a lot of vacant real estate up there, but um, it was important to us to have plenty of solar to be able to charge the batteries as efficiently as we possibly can. The two on the front and the two in the back are actually 190 watt panels, monocrystalline, and the six in the center are 315 watt monocrystalline. Um, we actually ended up getting a pretty good deal in these panels. We actually bought them from a local supplier uh, and we're able to buy them in bulk and save quite a bit of money. So look into that definitely when you're looking to do your solar. Um, we also, for mounting, we use the Renergy mounts, which worked out really good. They make a, a curved set that is for the curved roofs. And we really like the way they turned out. So here's our junction box where the wires go inside the bus. So let's go ahead inside and take a look. All right, so we did our roof tour. Now we're gonna show you where from the junction box, this is where we ended up Putting, bringing them in through the roof. Um, like I say, this is our main closet for our batteries and it just worked out really good. And it seemed to be the best place to come inside the bus. You'll have to determine that on your RV. You know, sometimes you may not even have to drill a hole. You may be able to go through some type of vent or something like that, but this was the best option we could come up with for our system. All right, so we've made our way downstairs to the back bay of the bus. And back here, we ended up putting our AC solar system down below. One, because it was a pretty large system, and two, we just frankly ran out of room inside. Coming down from the roof, we run our wires all the way down through our two fuses here, 400 amp fuses. And then the power gets distributed into these two charge controllers. These are 150 volt, 35 amp max charge controllers from Victron. The beauty of these is they actually have Bluetooth capability. So you're able to connect them to any other Victron device, basically. You're able to connect it to your phone to check your readouts. Really has been a nice feature to have. And from there, the power runs to our big inverter. This is a Victron Energy Quattro 24 volt. 5,000 watt inverter. Um, this thing is a beast. We knew we were going to need something to handle a lot of power to power the ACs. So we wanted to make sure we had plenty of power or plenty of inverter to not deal with overloading and overheating issues. Moving from our inverter, we move to our big battery 24 volt batteries. These came from bigbattery.com. It's a company out of California who purchases used cells. They're typically very, you know, minimally used and uh, they build their own containers to put them in and what's nice about these is they come with a BMS built in temperature monitoring they have a uh, display for it shows your voltage um, it has an on and off switch is a very nice feature that we've utilized when dealing with temperature issues and it also something I really like that they do is they utilize an Anderson connector which is what I'm talking about right here it makes it very simple to plug it into there and then run it straight over to your inverter with very little work. It's kind of a plug and play type thing. Um, I've been very pleased with these batteries. Um, they've recently done some changes to them and we'll link the newest ones below. And they just added a really good warranty onto all of their batteries. So I would definitely check them out if you're in the market for lithium batteries. Um, I don't think you'll be able to save any more money than you do with them, especially if you're looking for a warranty involved. That, I think it's a great option. So now we're going to talk about our second system. This system primarily runs the rest of the bus, if you will. 
Um, it's in charge of running pretty much everything inside from our 12 volt to our 110 power, which includes our TVs, our refrigerator, and pretty much all that. And that was very important to us when building this system is that we could run this stuff anytime we wanted, anytime we needed, especially the vital stuff like the refrigerator and our pumps and our lights. So let's jump into this. All right, so coming from our roof, from our panels, and we're gonna jump right into our charge controllers. This is a 12 volt system. Um, this is not quite the same size and we're not pulling the same type of power we were down below. So we ended up going with a 100 volt, 30 amp charge controller, dual ones, and this has provided plenty of power for us. Um, we actually ended up having to upgrade them when we first built the system. I bought a little too small of charge controllers and they weren't charging the batteries as efficiently as I wanted. So we ended up getting rid of those and buying these and it seems to be a much better system. All right. From our charge controller, we go straight down to our Victron 3000 watt inverter. Like I said, again, we didn't need quite the power usage that we did down below. So we were able to go with a 12 volt system with a 3000 watt inverter, and it has performed flawlessly. It works great. It's again, Bluetooth, so I'm able to look on my phone and check out all the stats, all the readings. Uh, it's been a really seamless system to use. And we use it every day. I mean, I'm always checking power, especially if we're off grid or if we're having to utilize less than 50 amp or even 30 amp. It's great to be able to instantly go in there and change settings and do things the way you want to do And the it. final part of our house system is, of course, the batteries, the most important part. This system here was the one we actually built first. And I got really interested in Will Prouse, if you guys know him on YouTube, he's a really good resource for learning to do this stuff. And he did some work and did some testing on these Valance batteries. And I lucked out and ended up finding a guy locally that had them. And I was able to go and pick them up and buy them. What these are is they're made by Valance. Um, they're 138 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. Um, they actually came out of an experimental project from Pepsi that failed that the government helped fund and the guy I bought them from bought a bunch of the batteries and took them apart and took out the individual cells and resold them. So far these things have worked great. They, the good thing about them is they all kind of connect through these connecting cords right here. So they all kind of speak to each other and work together and it's really been a nice system. It works great. It provides us two or three days of power without any type of sunlight or any type of charge from any, any source. So they really have worked out great for us. These batteries are getting harder and harder to find. There aren't as many of them around as there once was and the prices went way up on them. So if you can still find them, I believe they are a good option, but um, good luck finding them at this point. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. We get asked all the time about solar and our solar. And one of my main purposes for doing this video is to show you it's not as complex and as hard as a lot of people make it out to be. Me and my brother Steve over at RV Steve Travels did this entire system. The majority of it was purchased off of Amazon, all the cables, the fittings. It's really not that difficult and you can save a lot of money by doing a lot of this work yourself. But if you have any questions, please post them down below. I'd be glad to answer them and uh, we'll try to post as many resources about our system and about other solar things down below also. But hey, thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate it and we will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you.